welcome to um, a, a really short video uh, that helps us um, hopefully better understand and, and, and take a look at our needs assessment template um, that most of us are working through um, in the next couple of weeks. And we really wanted to bring it down to a uh, um, conversational level. And Melinda's with me today from Rake Forest. Hello. Hey. And uh, I'm just thrilled that, that she was able to join us. And we're really happy that you are willing to, to, to take this little journey with us for a few minutes. And Melinda's prepared some, some pretty good um, um, slab, um, slides from a slide deck where we'll be going through. I would also encourage you to take some notes while you watch um, this video because under the video, in the comments section, you can ask comments or you, or you can ask questions actually and make any comments, uh, post any concerns, and we'll be sure to get back to you um, as soon as we can. So we want to make this video experience as um, interactive as we can and as helpful. If there's a question that you don't feel comfortable asking in the public setting because whatever we post online in, in the comment box below will be in public, you can always email us or, or give us a call and we'll, we'll touch base with you as fast as we can. Uh, we're, we're here to serve you and, and to help you through this needs assessment process. So we really do want to hear from you. It's part of, part of the effort. So Melinda, I'll, I'll give it to you and, and let you um, introduce uh, the process. And I may jump in as we go right. along and, and ask some questions or ask some questions that providers have asked us as well. Um, especially the past couple of days, because it is obvious that folks are beginning to dig in and make some progress. Yes, thank you so much, Jamie. And uh, some of those questions are exactly what um, triggered our desire to make this video for you to just give hints and tips uh, about the assessment and how you use the template within that. Um, as Jamie indicated, we definitely really want to support you and be available for you. We hope that these tips will be really helpful. Um, but again, as Jamie indicated, if you have additional questions, um, definitely let us know either in the public comments or by email. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> So first of all, we just wanted to tell you our big picture goal for this video is we want to take what might be a intimidating assessment tool. It's many, many pages long as you've seen. It has a lot of information points um, and we want to help you break it down. So there's only a few places on each page where you need to enter data. Um, and it was done that way to kind of help you see things in one problem at once, but that, that has had the effect of making it look bigger than it should have been. So we're gonna break it down, look at it in steps, and hopefully that's gonna help make it easier for you to complete your assessment. Yeah, and, and Melinda, I've actually heard back from, from several providers who, who see this really long, document the scrolls and scrolls and scrolls. If you hit print, it, it may be over 50 pages or something. Um, not exactly sure of the actual number, but it seems like a lot of, of dense, complex, a series of drop down boxes within Excel. And if you're like me, uh, some of us have Excel phobia, so that kind of raises your level of anxiety, um, but it, it, it does help. I really do want to encourage folks to, um, the, the template follows a pattern to be designed in a very similar way. So if we can absorb and understand one substance, for example, we can replicate those lessons learned in the other template substances as well. And, and your process, I think, over time, uh, uh, completing one substance, two substances, We'll get it a little bit easier in terms of the technical process of navigating the spreadsheet. Um, so give yourself a chance. And I always remind myself sometimes we have to embrace our fear in order to see through the fog. 
and just say, yeah, this is overwhelming. Yeah, it is, but I'm not going to give up. And we're going to take it a step at a time. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. And and the attempt template, while it is long, it really is formulaic in how it's laid out. So it always starts with, in the left-hand side under the problem column, it starts with the state data sources. Um, and it'll first address consumption. That's how much are people using substances. So that's survey data like how many times in the last 30 days did you drink alcohol, for example, um, is, a sub, is a consumption variable. So it starts with those. It works one data source at a time. And then it goes to consumption under that same column. Then you have a, the next column, you start to rate things. Then you look at things one intervening variable at a time and so forth down the list. It's always ordered the same for each substance. Consumption, consequence. Uh, then the intervening variables are in the same order. I believe they start with social access, retail access, and so forth down the list. So um, it, it does follow a really logical formulaic sequence. So if you figure it out for one substance, it'll be the exact same for the next one. So we'll, we'll trust the process. And yes. Yes. So we ready for the next one? Sure. Let's okay. move forward. So to kind of just talk briefly about the big picture for this, assessments, as you know, they're helping us to figure out where we can have the biggest impact. They're identifying our biggest problems, the underlying causes of those problems, what we have capacity to address, and then how can we look at what kind of strategies will actually help us with that? It helps us use our resources very effectively. Uh, it helps us see, most importantly, how we can make positive change in our communities. And so it's taken a lot of little data points to really get down to that effective point. You know, Melinda, one of the things I think about is, is taking time to look at your community holistically. Um, and that's really hard sometimes, and it's challenging. And I always think about a, um, I, I saw a, a sign that was on, on a desk uh, many, many years ago. It was actually President Obama's desk. And it was a, a small placard um, that, that stayed on his desk. It said, hard things are hard. And we're dealing with some really hard topics, really yes, important absolutely. topics in our communities. Mm -hmm. And the solutions we want to bring forward will be hard to assess, to implement, to evaluate, because the problems are hard. So especially during this uncertain time in our communities, we have to, again, give ourselves some grace to, to acknowledge that we're dealing with some really hard processes in our communities. Assessment is really, really hard. And the outcomes we're trying to achieve is really, really hard. But you can make positive change. And positive change is based off really good assessment work. Yeah, it's, it is definitely hard work to do well. Um, you know, we're really trying to understand our communities and how we can respond. And it's also critical if we're really going to make a positive difference. So when we designed the needs assessment, we designed it to do a couple of things. We wanted it to break the assessment down into steps because as we indicated, this is, can be hard work. And if we try to pick, do it all in one step, we're probably going to get a little overwhelmed with what we're doing. So we're breaking it into steps. And then we also want it to document kind of how we make decisions. Um, a lot of times if we would look at this after the fact, if we didn't have things like our problem ranks and our places for notes, we might have forgotten why we chose the problems or the intervening variables we do. So we want to include just enough notes there to trigger our memories about why we made a decision, but not have all of the processes 
and conversations we went to captured in those. So just the highlights. Um, so this shows us how we make decisions. It also, it sets us up to choose good strategies. So it sets us up to choose strategies that are based upon our biggest problems in our communities, those root underlying causes of those intervening variables. So they're really why these problems exist and um, what we have capacity to actually be able to address. Cause there's some things that are um, really big, important contributors, but they're not things that we can address. And so, so we try to combine finding those things that are the biggest problems in our community, getting down to why they're happening and how we could change that, what we actually have the capacity to do. And that sets us up to really choose good effective strategies for our communities. It also sets us up to be able to evaluate our efforts. Um, so it's super important on many, many levels to do a good assessment and to really break it down into those steps to make sure you're really getting to a really good place for what's gonna be really useful in your community. So Melinda, this is really why we wanted to do this video today, or a series of videos actually, is to, to basically break down the template via step one, step two, and step three. So what we're gonna do now we're going to stop this video and look down to the next video. We're going to have video number two that um, discusses step one. We'll have another short video for step two and a, um, the last video will briefly cover step three. In case you have to refer back to um, our material, the video, or the slide deck, you will be able to, to immediately go in and just hit play on the appropriate step video. So um, again, thank you for joining us and let's let's move on to the next video. Mm -hmm.